So we have a very special speaker today. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I've been a student. Uh, I'm here with my mentor for almost, I guess, four years now. Yeah, years every time we come talk. Yeah, well, I remember my first Christmas with Keith. It's four. Because he, yes, he bought me my class with you to do Wing Chi Healing. Oh, right, too. That's right. So that's why I was in the middle. You just don't want to get older. That's what they get. That's right. Two favorite guys, what can I say? So I'd really love for you to um, hear more from Derek himself. He has been in this work, uh, I would almost say, a lifetime. He's an inspirational teacher. He has an online radio show, Between Two Worlds, which he truly lives in Between Two Worlds. He has one foot in this world, and he can step into that other world. He's a wonderful healer, wonderful medium, and a great speaker. So I'm just going to leave it with you. up on AM and FM, so it depends on who you get listening again. I'm going to turn on my glasses here. It's age now. <laughs> yeah. They're especially made they're called benders. Last night I wrote a, or actually a couple nights ago I wrote a poem. And uh, there was a lady that uh, wrote to me. She says, Derek, you know, they're, they're doing a contest. And they wanted, uh, the title's called Ode uh, to One Spirit Path. And I thought, you know what? I think it's a good idea for me to write a poem. It's been a while since I wrote a poem, since I wrote a book. So, <clears throat> what I want to do is to actually share with you this, with you, with this uh, poem that I wrote. And, uh, it tells a story about the past and how we understand what has happened uh, about our lives when we actually cross over. So it's actually a story about two cowboys. So two cowboys ride towards the desert sun. One turns to the other and said, Slim, you weren't no fun. Riding with you all my life, I think I got nothing done. Spending my time on my back of my steed, all I got was cuts and scrapes in my hands, they bleed. We've been branding, roping, girling, chasing, all things that are set aside. What really burns me up is you took my bride. I know, I know, we said we'd share our goods, but tarnation, you grabbed this one right out of the woods. She was pretty heifer. Her black blonde hair was long, just like my old Betsy here. She was a wild at first and mighty strong. Yeah, those were the days we sit and ride, my spurs and my boots, my butts rough like rawhide. So why are we here? So I'm just curious to see. Somehow it looks like a road to Galilee. Galilee, you say, replies his partner named Bill. Well, we've been spending our moments together still. Trapping and singing, hunting, sometimes life was grim. Now you can have a look yonder there, Slim. Y'all are past or why? We have trails to see, people to meet, and it's not over, Slim. You're stuck with me. It was your spirit path you took, an old medicine man told me once. It's like a brotherhood we chose to give people a look. The experience we learned when I opened the good book. The only good book you read, Bill, was Cooking with Cookie. And he wasn't pretty either, so why bother take a looky? What I mean, Slim, is that it's time to go. We ride towards the old sunset and the eastern plain. Where are we going, Bill? Slim replied, there is no snow and no rain. Oh, look, Bill, there is someone down yonder, as if they're waiting for us to meet, I wonder. Why are we here, Bill? Why are we here? It's our spirit path we took, and it's time to leave. Others will stay, but do not grieve. Our lifetime is done here, Slim. We have no wrath. Let's ride in peace. This is an old for our spirit path. Basically, uh, I take the characters in myself. When I work as a medium, and uh, 
people who actually have lived on this land, I always become that person all of a sudden because they like to step into your body. You ever seen that movie called Ghost? <laughs> now Whoopi Goldberg, and she's sitting in a chair, all of a sudden the guy sits inside of her and goes, oh my God, you know? Well, that's what happens to me now. I get people actually pretty well feeling like as if they're stepping right into me and start talking to me through me. And so at times, I have people walk up and they'll say, whatever you said hit me. Whatever you said, no one ever would have known. Because it's not me that's telling you what I want to tell you, it's what they will tell you. And that's the thing, what we learned about our life in these days is that it's not about us that we are trying to give you the message. It's about those who want to give the message from the other side. Because they're telling you that it's not done, it's not an end. And there's a, a fellow who actually I'm going to have my radio show. You ever heard of a fellow by the name of Kenny Kingston? He actually was a psychic to the stars. He used to read for Marilyn Monroe and, and Princess Diane. And he actually was tutored under Mae West. I must be <laughs> anyway, Kenny, Kenny's still living, and he's still alive. He's in, I believe he's in his late 70s, I believe they were saying, maybe 70s or 80s. And I've got him coming on my radio show, and he's going to be sharing his stories, what he went through. And I actually was fortunate, he actually sent me his book. Kenny inspired me when I was actually 13 years old. And it kind of, seem, kind of seems like kind of strange, but you know, I watched him on television one time, and uh, I used to watch a show called... Uh, up in Edmonton, and uh, he came on, and he actually is American himself, so he's not a Canadian citizen, but he came on to the Tommy Banks show. You ever heard of Tommy Banks? Well, he came on Tommy Banks show back in the mid-70s, early mid-70s, and I watched him do his work, and I was actually quite shocked when he actually stood there and he said, Tommy, you got a whole bunch of Indians all around you. Well, I kind of this behind them, like what? You know, they're kind of shocked because that's what he's saying. There's a lot of Indians around him, a lot of his own guides, and that uh, Tommy is being guided. And even though he was himself being an orchestral uh, band leader, and he's done a lot of work in humanity and main work. And so, but he would actually tell stories. He would tell stories, and he actually let people know that spirit is always continuous and never ends. And so we always have guides who have loved ones. And I've had so many people come up and you say, you know, whose name am I guide? I want to know the name of my guide. Sometimes it's not really necessary to know the name of your guide. All we know is we're just being guided. But most of the time we actually are led and guided by family. Because it's a family that actually keeps, keeps us on our path. Now we have uh, young ones here today that are in spirit that have also lost their lives. And they themselves too did not know what to do and to how to live and to how to fulfill their finish, their, their life in the fulfillment of age. And yet, when they come through, they're saying, we still love you. Now we understand. Because in spirit, you're already told, once you're on your side, that it's never finished. That you have so much to give. And even children, babies that are even crossed over, they would also even grow up to be young adults. And they'll even come and meet you. And they'll say, hi, it's me. But yet, you may think, well, I don't know this baby, because this child only was a baby, not a young man or a young woman. But that child has grown in spirit, because they will let you know that they're still around you to give you comfort. That's why you always have a warm feeling on your shoulder to let you know that you're not alone. Because we've always felt, I feel so alone inside, I'm all by myself. Even though you may not have any physical people around you, at times you may feel like I need to be by myself. And you want to write a song to inspire yourself, you want to write a poem, as I have done. And I wrote my, when I wrote my book, all that is actually channeled from spirit. It's not because I want to feel inspired, they just told me it's time. And when I wrote my book, and I've, brought, and I've actually brought my book out and sold for quite a few uh, editions, and people have all said to me, after they read the book, they've said that it has helped them. Something in that book, <coughs> I mean, something in that book that related to them, something in that one of the, one of the <coughs> stories that I wrote may relate to them. Because we all have something that relates to us. 
because it's always a loss of a loved one, or having to feel alone, or wanting to make something happen for us, or even for dealing with a drug and alcohol addiction, or even a tobacco addiction, or even like other kinds of addictions in our lives, or just basically feeling why we feel at times suicidal. People at times do go through that. Because we feel like kind of lost inside, why do we inspire ourselves to feel one and feel suicidal? To end it really quick, I always tell people, it's not done yet. Because if you go to the side of the spirit sooner than you're supposed to, it's going to slow you down because you're not going to get to meet anyone until you come to understanding what you've done wrong. And the wrong is not what God tells you what you've done wrong. It's what your higher consciousness tells you you went too soon. So you stay in this one particular place and so you make a decision by forgiving yourself and then deciding to move ahead. And that's how you learn your lessons. But if you think you're going to get away with it by having to walk away from everything that you need journey that you've chosen, uh-uh. Earth has a purpose for you. That's the teach. We all are teachers in this room. We're educators. We're mothers, we're fathers, we're sisters, we're brothers, we're aunties, we're uncles, we're children. The inner child still within us ourselves. And we'll always become even more successful if we believe in ourselves more. It's no, it's no big deal if, if your kids say to you, Mom, grow up, you're kind of acting a little bit too childish. You know what? There's nothing wrong with that because we were kids when we were young. What's the big difference? Right? Sometimes we have to have some fun. We're not to play. We don't have to act like as if we're old, thank God. <clears throat> you know, the thing is that there are some people out there who I've met that are in their 70s and 80s, and they're out there going to Mexico, and they're having more fun than their kids. Really. They said they wish they went out there 25, 30 years before. But the thing is, they made that decision to go, and they really enjoyed themselves. And some people still say to themselves, before they cross over, you know, one day I'm going to go to Hawaii, or one day I'm going to go to Mexico, or one day I'm going to crack travel across the world, but they may not have made it. But in spirit, they did. We still make our decision to have to travel. Our consciousness, our heart, wants to fulfill that dream, and that's exactly what it is. Our dreams will always begin with us. When, Bar <clears throat> when Reverend Barbara wrote, um, God has a dream for me, thank you. I love when she just steps right in. <laughs> when God has a dream for me, my understanding of that, our first song, is because I remember when Barb, when I met Barbara for the very first time, that here she is trying to help a lot of people. And she's just there. Her presence is just there because her orb light is just there. People want to come to her. They feel so attracted to her. And I would go to her and I would ask questions for certain things that I was not too sure about. I think my first uh, real question is when something came to me when I was flying home a couple of years back and I was on a journey. And I traveled up to Regina and I was doing a wellness show up there. <clears throat> and I was coming back home. The night before, I was in my hotel room and I thought to myself, I wonder if I'm really doing a good enough job. I really, really think, you know, am I really doing a good enough job? And I said, okay, Spirit. <clears throat> if you think I'm really doing a good, job, a good enough job, I need to know. Give me an answer. Give me something and I need, need some proof. Well, left it at that. Woke up the next morning. Got rest to go. Got on the plane. I'm flying back home. Now, we had to take two stops. I had to make a stop transfer planes from Calgary, from Calgary, then we head back to Vancouver. When I changed planes, I'm on the second plane, I'm sitting down, and I'm the only guy in my own section, I got the window seat, I love the window seat. So I'm looking out the window. Anyways, I have my hat and my briefcase, I put it under the seat, and I have my jacket on my lap, I pull up, pull up my book, and I'm sitting there and starting to read. People are still walking in. Everybody's quiet. Plane's about to get started. All of a sudden, I heard this click on my boots. And I thought, what's this? Looking down, and here I pulled out a set of rosary beads sitting on my boots, wrapped around my boots, on my boots. And I'm looking at these rosary beads, and I thought, oh, this is interesting. So I'm re looking at the rosary beads, they're made of wood, like 
for red cherry wood. And on the cross, wooden, or made of wood, on the cross said, Mabudia, <coughs> heavens above between worlds. And my wife, <coughs> in her language, because her language is Yugoslav, and she knew what it meant, but I had no idea what it meant to me. So I come home and I'm telling my wife all about it. I'm all excited. I said, I had these rosary beads, just how they land on my feet. Interesting. So I decided to call Barb up and ask her, you know, what does this mean? And she just says, well, your mother-in-law came through and she sent those to you, told those to you. She says, call an airport. And I'm going, oh, cool. Well, all of a sudden, my wife jumped up off the bed and she goes, oh, now I know why. And I said, why? She says, you came home October 3rd, or so you came home March 31st. Yeah? Mama crossed over March 31st. That was your message. They're watching over you. Oh. <laughs> I do. Have with me all the time. <clears throat> so I know, and all of you should know. If you think no one's watching over you, you're wrong. Because I already know myself that there's always people watching over me. And watching over my family. And actually it's kind of funny because my wife's mom always thought I was the coolest guy she'd ever met for her. And she I just always tease her all the time. So and this woman when she crossed over, she wasn't a specific religion Catholic, but she actually Funny this way, I'm not going to say this, I'm wrong on that part. Mama was actually living the life of a Jehovah Witness. And, but she didn't care what the religious name, the name itself, she just believed in God. That's all she cared about. And all she wanted to do was give me that rosary to let me know. Because a rosary means having faith. Having faith in yourself and the path that you take. So if you think you're off your path, Think twice, because you're not. Because if you have something that you feel you're off, go back to it, regroup, and get back in your, on your line again. I've been off my path a few times, because I want to steer here, I want to go here, I want to go here. But you learn. If a door shuts in front of you, that means it's not meant to be. But it doesn't mean it's over. You have more to do. So when you actually it's time that you know someone you know is crossing over, let them know that it's never done, that they're coming back. They got more to learn. And if anybody ever tells you, well, I ain't coming back no more, it's hard life here, <laughs> think twice. Because it's gonna happen again. Until you make that decision yourself that you're completely finished. And it's up to God to say to you, your dream is finished. So Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Derek. That was a wonderful, wonderful address. Right now we're coming to a very special part of our service, and it is our healing. Uh, we do have absent healing requests. If you would like to write down a name and put it in the bowl back there. Uh, as Barbara says, God only needs your first name only because he knows who you are. So if you'd like to do that, please do. There's going to be healing facilitators. If you would like to have a healing yourself, please take one of the chairs and one of our facilitators will come to heal. I want to read this because I really love reading this, Barbara. I know that you just... You just can flow with it, but uh, it is really nice. And again, it says, first name filled because God knows who the prayer is for. Healing begins as soon as you request it, through the energy, and each day, the healing facilitators, which are quite a few of us here, we will be sending healing, mess healing to a healing energy to those people in the bowl, and to all of you that come here every week. So we don't, we don't just focus on the bowl, we focus on all our congregation and anyone who comes through the door that wants that healing. So you, you are always in our thoughts and prayers. 
So if you'd like to participate in the healing, if you'd like to, please go to the back. I'm going to turn the music on. And what I'm going to ask you folks here, just close your eyes. And just let go of rushing to get here today. Let go of what you have to do after the service. And just, as Jeannie would say, make your mind a blank canvas. And just let your healing and your thoughts take you wherever you need to be today. and touch. 
touch all of them so that they too may experience the wonderful healing, the wonderful peace. Allow that energy now to go forward into the world and not only touch the world's leaders, but to touch the animals, the vegetation, the waters, the atmosphere, so that they may be healed. And let us be thankful to the animals and the vegetation and the minerals that give of themselves and serve us so greatly and feed us so well. now to reach out into the universe, into other parts of the universe that we are not familiar with, for many mansions in God's world that we are not aware of every room and every mansion. But we send love and we send caring, for God promises us that love and healing is never ending. All we need to do is ask, and the energy will follow the intention of the thought, and the healing will begin. Now as we circle back to the seat of the soul, take a few moments just to sit quietly before you come back to your everyday work a day world, to enjoy the tranquility and the peace of the healing area of your garden, the inner garden of healing. And know that you may visit here at any time, and God has promised the love and the healing is never ending. So open your hearts, your mind, and your hand. God bless you, and He sends His angels to keep after you. Thank you to our healing facilitators for doing the healing. Thank you for all for sharing your energy and, and uh, beautiful energy going through the room right now. Very, very beautiful. We have some great announcements and some exciting things coming up here uh, in the next little bit. Uh, but I guess before I get to the announcements, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Birthdays, anniversaries? No birthdays or anniversaries. No, no birthdays on today. Okay, well then we'll get to the exciting news coming up. We're doing a spring bazaar here at the chapel. And that is May 17th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So if you'd like to sell crafts or arts or you have a special talent to do, we are going to have tables available for purchase $20. That $20 goes right back to the chapel. 
So if you'd like to sell some of your crafts or jewelry, whatever you do, we would love to have you here. Also, if you are a great baker, we always love people that can bake cookies, muffins, cakes, loaves. We're looking for people to help with our bake table that day. And uh, we're also having a jumble sale table. So if there's some items you don't use at home anymore or things you want to re-gift or something you wouldn't use, please bring it and uh, we can put it on our jumbo sale table. And uh, again, all the money goes to the church. So it just enables us to do so much more. And I've taken on the role of silent auction table and Alex has kindly given me my first donation. And uh, I've also got a donation from a medium who's going to give a reading. Donate a, a complimentary reading for that. So, White stuff to give us two paintings. Two paintings, and Alex is giving us a painting as well. So we'll have three beautiful paintings. So uh, I'm determined to get some great, great items for the silent auction. I'll be hitting you all up soon. Right now, and we have, oh my gosh, we have a professional magician. George Cook is confirmed. Magic for children. We have a folk singer and children entertainer and author, Rosemary Phillips. She'll be here to entertain the children of all ages. There will be psychic demos, and there'll be a tea room with readings for those who desire to participate. So it's going to be a great day for all. So we really would love for you to come. Be generous, open your wallets, bring your loving energy, and let's just have a beautiful day full of love and light here. And uh, now I'm going to ask if uh, we can do the offering song for your free will offering for the chapel. Sorry, number 21. I just thought we'd all memorized it by now. today to help us on our divine purpose to keep the chapel running and open for everyone to be welcome to come. We thank you for all you give. We work in the highest and best for you and we ask that only good come to us and good go through us. We thank you for your generous donation. Amen. to the little exciting time of our service and it's the demonstration of mediumship and uh, with our guest Derek White Sky Cloud. Before you start, may I give you a message? Sure. <laughs> the students doing the teaching on that. Mom and Dad are right there and Mom said she gave you your wings. She's taking full responsibility for your wings and she showed me wings, they were like a butterfly. And we were talking about the color sunburst storms this morning. They look like a sunburst orange wings. Like big, beautiful butterfly wings. She says, your wings will always have to be different from everybody else. But she takes full responsibility for your wings. Because she says she gave those to you. And really, that's when I said book two. She wants book two, book three, book four. So you know, she says you got one out of the way. Number two, you already know what it's going to be. She says you just have to start get, getting down on the paper. And you already have an idea for three. Guess what? There's four. It's volume one, two, three, and four. The one is a book on teaching. It's a, it, she says it's a practice, like a, a, a work, a book that you're going to write where people can practice it at home. It's like a practical book. And you've already thought about that anyway. So she just wants you to know she's going to bug you to do it because she sure likes coming around you now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to you. Funny thing, you can't get with your mother. <laughs> what happens is, uh, I love my mom dearly. 
Um, a lot of kids used to always say, well, never spend enough time with your parents after you're doing your own thing on your life. But you know what? After your parents crossed over, they spend more time with you. So the thing is that, uh, since my mom crossed over, I've been really busy even more, and including my father as well. Um, I was actually quite fortunate. I had Chris Moon on my radio show. This guy actually had this box called Telephone to the Dead. And it was made, the box itself was made by Thomas Edison. It was actually designed it that way. And he actually himself was a spiritualist. He actually, his mom and dad were spiritualists. And when his mother crossed over, he wanted to find out if it was possible to, to make contact with his parents, or especially his mom. And so when he invented this box, he made contact with her. And not just basically make contact say hello. He actually made contacts like hello, but he actually heard his mother's voice come through this box. And so when I had Chris Moon on my show, when he told me all about it, and I listened to the show because actually Chris was up in Georgia, Savannah, Georgia, and I listened to the show because he, uh, Dr. Jimmy called me up and said, Dr. Derek, you got to listen to this, buddy. He said, this is totally phenomenal. And Jimmy was there himself, and they actually, people were in the audience like yourself, were asking a question. They'll say, my name is so-and-so, and I'm looking to make contact with my father and my mother by the name of that person's voice would come through from that box and say hello to you, and it would be their own voice. And so when I talked to Chris on my show, I said, Chris, can I make contact with my mom and dad? Oh, sure, he says. What's their name? So I gave my mom and dad's names. Mom came forward. And she's talking the way she'd give me a message actually asking questions. And I thought to myself, well, how do I know this is my mom and my dad? So I thought, okay, well, I'll get a friend and lady friend of mine to phone in. So she's phoning in. She's out, and she, I was talking to Dale Haggerty, and her husband was Dale Haggerty, big guy. And Dale wanted to talk to his dad. So Dale gets on the phone, and he tells Chris he wants to get a hold of his dad. The next thing you know, there's an argument under the sign. I can hear two people arguing on this little box. Not arguing as a negative way, but arguing as like, I'm talking, I'm not done yet. And there's like two people talking, and Chris is going, I've never had this happen before. He said, there's two people arguing with each other, like they, one wants to stay on. Well, all of a sudden I heard my father's voice, he says, your mother's directing traffic again. <laughs> so what was happening is I knew that was my code, that let me know that my, mom, my father and my mother were there. And my mother was not going to give me up yet, she wasn't done talking to me. But after the show, I had my time with Chris alone after the show. And so it was direct line. And it was my mom's voice, I know, and I can hear her, and my dad's as well. But my mom's the strongest. So I thought, okay, great. And mom told me that no matter what I would be doing now, she'll be there for me. And she always has been supportive of what I've been doing. My mother was actually quite psychic herself. I mean, she actually had to be able to see things herself, but she didn't use the word psychic. You just is called the knowing, you just know. Mothers always have the, I just know. So if a parent ever tells you, you know, if you tell your mom, well, how do you know I'm doing this? I just know. You know, your, your husbands are married to your wives. Well, how do you know? I just know. Because women have a third eye and they got one back of their head too. <laughs> Anyways, you guys are here to get some messages. Well, I'll tell you this right now. I'm sitting in the chair right here and we're going through a meditation and I can hear this chair creaking like crazy. So I knew so cool well there was actually someone sitting beside me in this chair and they're letting you know that they're actually around this room. I'm not kidding you, it was creaking like crazy, it was going nuts. Like he said, so I was sitting on the chair, you hear that creaking sound, your foot's moving. That's what I was getting, just like that sound. And I was sitting next to me and I thought, oh, this is wild. But also too, the, the poem that I've actually recited for you guys, I've got extra copies if you want to take a moment here, one more or two. That poem actually is going to be the next poem I'm putting inside my book, my second book. So, um, you get a chance to. If you don't get one now, I can get one when I get the book. Anyways, um, what I got here, I, mean, I actually got some people coming through, and I want to give a message for you right here. You be great? Okay, what's your first name? Ruby. Ruby? Ruby? Yeah. You don't get that song, that name anymore, but it's a song of Ruby. Yeah, and <laughs> I get it song. Kenny <laughs> Rogers. Okay. Um, I've got, I'm going to give you a message from my here. I've got actually, um, okay. I have a young male behind you right now, and uh, the way he stands behind you is that he's like, he's doing this. I'm trying to get my attention, okay? He's crossed over, understand? 
This young man serves me. And I want to say that when he's coming through, almost like he's almost like a brother figure to you, but he's not a brother. He's actually, he knows you. This man, young man, I crossed over. I want to say he passed a car accident because, let's say, he died past. I would say around 16, 17, he's like to school. He tells me he's connected to you somehow. He knows you. I'm not sure you know the name Michael, but he says he knows you, Mike, Michael or Mikey. And he can tell me he knows you. He's behind you. He actually says, thank you for being my friend. He says, you used to always come up to me and give me that support. So whatever you actually did for him, encourage him, even saying hello, that made him feel good. Does that make sense at all? Okay? So he's also with you. Um, he's not a guy. <laughs> he says, I'm not directing traffic with her. He said, I'm just showing, just letting her know that just thanking her that she's with, that he's with her. And he said, okay, he tells you to say this to you, he had a bit of a crush on you. So, it's almost like back then, he had a crush on you, so he's actually, but he's actually saying, he likes you a lot, but he's there to give you a hand, okay? I also have one more person here with me as well. I got actually two more people. I want to say grandma and grandfather, because on your father's side, crossed over grandma's understand? I grew on my, my father's side. Yeah. I did say uh, father, they said father, father's side. I got grandmother here, crossed over. Okay? I also have a grandfather here, also crossed over. Yeah. And they're telling me they're in spirit here with me. And they're also with you as well. And they're actually on this right side with you. Understand? When they're with you, they're actually coming through for a reason, and they actually would give you love and support. Your grandma told me to give you a, a hug back to you. And she's also mentioned about Saskatchewan, like that and that area, because she says you're gonna make some trips up towards Albert, uh, towards the Saskatchewan way. But there's someone who will be making contact with in that area. Okay, and it's gonna be something to do with, I wanna say ownership of land or company of ownership is only, you know, only a connection to a business that would be owning or being bought, a connection of, how do you say it? Wanting to become a partner in a business or will become part of the business that's going to happen. And we'll say we'll be hearing about this for the next six months, two weeks, two years. Does that make sense? Okay, because you really want to travel. I'm told about traveling. If you're behind that wheel, girl, if you're flying, you're flying. Okay? I like creaky floors. <laughs> I'm paranormal investigating <laughs> again. You walk into a house, oh, I had a dream yesterday, and I have to share this with you guys. I dreamt that I was in this house, and I was with a bunch of people who were doing paranormal investigating. And this house is quite old, and uh, it's like a abandoned type of house. And actually, when I was walking into the kitchen area, and there's a window, a bay window in front of me, and I looked at this window, and it looked like a young woman back in the, I would say, late 1800s, where she wore those kind of boots, you know, the a long curly dress type of thing. Uh, but her, she was actually sitting on the roof. The roof was actually just slightly an angle. Sitting on the edge of the roof, and her feet are crossed this way, and she's swinging her feet back and forth as if she's enjoying sitting on top of this roof, looking out towards the field. And when I saw her, <clears throat> when I saw her swinging her feet back and forth, and so I said to the guys, I said, I'm trying to get my camera going here. I want to take pictures of this girl, and I can, I can take pictures of her legs, but I can't see the whole body. So I said to the guys in the room, I said, I want to go around and take a picture of this girl in the room. So I actually went to swing around, take the picture, and next thing you realize, she took off, shoo, right palm, across the floor. So I said the guys catch up to her so I could see myself running back in the building. She's scooting really quick across the kitchen, out towards the street, and all of a sudden I'm seeing this girl, regular calm, like regular girl, running down the road, and guys are saying, you never got her. She must be the one you thought running, saw running out of the house. So they thought themselves that she actually was hiding in this house who actually was a live girl, and I said, no, no, this one's crossed over. What the answer for me was, not everything in a camera will tell you perfect, perfect. You can never find perfection from finding the spirit in the spirit. If you believe in yourself and you can find them, and see them, then trust them. A camera does not always give you an answer. Because some people say, I need to take a camera with them. So sometimes they use it as a dream, as a signal for you. Does it make any sense though? Okay? Now, I want to bring a message for you, my dear, the lady with the glasses that hang here. What is your name? Susan. Susan. Um, I want to have someone here with me, and I want to see, I've got a female here, older woman crossed over. She feels like she has mom connected to the family. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Your mother's crossed over? Yes. I have an England connection to her as well. I feel like I'm going to England, I have UK, I'm going to go that direction as well. 
Where about Scotland, Ireland? Ireland. Ireland? Okay. Okay. I don't want to insult you. <laughs> but not England. Ireland. <laughs> but I'm seeing that I go on the front, I'm seeing Cass's meet her the UK, just use her UK as an example. But I'm seeing her there. She's actually with you all the time. This one actually shows she actually shows herself being actually shorter than you. Okay? She's shorter than you. She's not taller, she's shorter than you. No, just above, maybe about here. Okay? She's actually shows herself to me as being younger, um, looking because she wants to be. She loves her looks being younger. She didn't like to be look older, she likes to look younger. Okay? Now, she's actually telling me to tell you right now that she's um, um, I'm not sure who the name Lionel is to you, or the name Lion, L-I-O-N, or Lionel, but she says, look at the symbol Lion. Okay. okay? Now, there's a reason for this, and if you look up maybe, my understanding of my teachings are if you look up the Lion totem, you'll find out what it means. That means that getting to know the feminine side of yourself more than the masculine side. Okay? That means that you need to be, nurture yourself more, trust yourself being who you are, instead of having to take control of things, let your partner take equal control with you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Because she's saying, yes, she may be the dominant role in the house, but it doesn't hurt to have the man to be by your side a little bit more often, to speak up for himself. And said being, no, you can't listen to you. I'm going to listen to you. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> She's just saying your stuff. Are you sure it's my mother? Uh, yeah, it's just female. She shows me she's a much older. She looks like she's connected to mom's son. Okay. Okay. Like, unless she's your grandmother, one or two. But she's not saying mom, but she's the name Lion. Okay. That could be like, um, also... <coughs> I got a name, two names here I have, like, uh, um, uh, Robert, 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 to you. Robert? Robert. R-O-B, Robbie? Robert, Robbie. Robert, I know Robert. Who's this? Alive. Yes. A cousin. A uh, nephew. Nephew, okay. Now there's also, she's also bringing up Lisa, or Lisa, Liza, who's this? I know uh, three Lisas. Okay. Um, she's the one, okay. She says, Lisa, it's almost like the girl has a German connection to her. Uh, there's one that has a Danish connection. Okay, close. Hers, she mentioned her. She went, basically, she's got a father's crossed over yes. and with her family. She wants to say, can you please pass the message on to her that her father says, please say hello, uh, that she does miss him and he's saying hello to her. Can you pass it on to her, please? Okay. Okay, because he's coming through, he's over my shoulder, he's tapping the shoulder, please tell her, pass her, because she's good friends. <coughs> Okay, and uh, he said light a candle for her, so he's asking, oh man, I'm getting creeped out, I don't feel him. Um, light a candle for him, uh, because I feel the way he crossed over was very dramatic, the way that the family could not handle the idea of him crossing. Okay, there's a reason for this, because I feel whether he passed a car accident, but he's like, gone really quick. quick. Yeah, it was cancer. Yeah, but it was really quick passing, it was expected, but it was traumatic to the family. Not the idea of having a heart attack, it's like we're trying to. Okay? Just pass it on his message. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got someone inside me right now. Even though we discussed this this morning, I didn't know the situation of Sister Regine. Um, her nephew's with me now. Um, I feel a huge dizziness with this boy, a huge dizziness with him. And I want to say that he dealt with manic depression. He was manic, he got very depressed inside. And I feel the consequence that he realized now a mistake he's made, he wished he didn't do it. If you can share that with the family, that he's so sorry, he just said, I'm so sorry. And I could feel the tears coming out of him. <coughs> um, and um, he's, his way he's saying he's begging for help to please understand that it was 
not through these, like his own, he said, at one point he says he's just being selfish, but now he says he understands now why he did this. Um, but there was someone he actually truly loved that hurt him. And he was so afraid to live for whatever the consequence of the situation was in one way. <clears throat> and um, he said, I'm with my dad. So whoever he, if his father, his father's still living, he's still around his father behind him, okay? Um, also, um, I guess it is, if he's had a passion for riding motorcycles or wanted to ride one, he's got one now. So he's being 14, but he's actually going to see himself on his speed bike. So he's back because I don't want to listen to his own self. So he's, he's not... You know, I'm hearing the word wild child, but he wasn't really specifically. He was just a very depressed young man. Uh, people probably did not see what his issues were. And he just saying he was just so sorry. So let Heather know that. Let family know that. Okay. Uh, it's amazing when people start following you in the building, they do that at times. So uh, the person that actually is sitting in that chair um, actually is one of the people that crop that actually used to come to this church. And <clears throat> they uh, sit here in this room. So I feel it's a minister has crossed over that actually follows you work and is supporting you. Well. <coughs> So each time you come to church, that person's presence is here. And um, I feel like she loves you as Margaret. Coordinator. So thank you, Maureen, for always making sure there's people here and the coffee and tea are made. And we really would like everyone to stay afterwards for coffee, tea, and conversation with us. And I think it's time to do our closing prayer. And our closing, or sorry, our closing song. Number eight, God be with you. I'm rushing myself here. Would you pray first? Barbara, will you come to the prayer? Okay. She's really making me work today. <laughs> it's just big shoes to fill. <laughs> so please, if I can ask you to um, close your eyes and thank Spirit, dear Mother, Father, God, and Holy Spirit. We thank you for today and all the wonderful opportunities you're going to bring our way. We thank you for a beautiful day. We thank you for bringing all these beautiful souls together today at home and online joining us. We ask for the highest and best for anyone who comes through our doors or tunes into us online. We work for you, Spirit. We ask that only good come to us and good go through us. We thank you for all we have and all that you give us. Amen.
strong arm. I'll just put the chairs on the floor. Yes. 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 Yes.